Hey everybody, and welcome to another episode of Throne Fall. Today, we're gonna try to cap off our series with all the mutators going to Frosty. Now, unfortunately, I think it's pretty much impossible to do Frosty with all the mutators. I've taken numerous cracks at it. So I'm gonna be going for Frosty with six out of seven mutators. I think I might just barely be able to manage that. I've been thinking long and hard about what my setup should be. And I keep coming back to the Royal Mint, Castle Fortification, and Elite Warriors. I think this is just the golden combo for me. I've experimented with the War Horse and having heavy armor, and that's reasonable enough. The rest of the perks are definitely a lot less efficacious. Like, Commander Mode seems like it would be good, but it kind of cripples you early. Late game, it's okay. For the mutators, to be honest, I think I need to just not have the turtle god. I was very tempted not to have the wasp god, and I even ran an attempt off camera without the wasp god and with the turtle god. But the problem with Frosty is that you'll get these waves where the enemies just have so much health with the turtle god that it just becomes like literally impossible to deal with it especially the flyer wave like it's just like you sit there and there's nothing you can do and all your archers are attacking the flyers and nothing's coming of it basically and they just destroy your entire economy so yeah i think getting rid of the turtle god will be the key so let's just hop into the game. I'm gonna see if I can greed out round one. It might result in an early restart, because there's a lot of swordsmen. But if I can get away with having just some houses, then that will contribute greatly to the war fund for many a wave. I'm definitely feeling the fragility of the enemies, for sure. So one difficulty with the Wasp God that we unfortunately have to deal with. Whoops. Oh man, that feels almost doable. One difficulty with the Wasp God is that we can't kite the enemies quite as easily. So that is... Not super great. I'll give it one more attempt. And then I think we'll just have to bite the bullet and have archers, I guess. Okay, I'm bungling it already. Big whoops. Hmm... I think I might be able to manage the micro if I just use my big attack to hit like all of them at once. Nah, no, nah, this is definitely an impossible wave. Oh well, it'd be what it'd be. The wasp mutator with all the other mutators is always going to be a real ball buster. But that is fine. It was worth an attempt. So our early economy is going to suck a little bit. I'm going to go for the fire archers, because I think, generally speaking, the fire archers are very nice. And our next wave is going to be a bunch of oozes, and the fire archers kind of counter the oozes. So I think it's a reasonable choice. I think the Hunter Archers are a pretty close second. The Hunter Archers just have a certain amount of survivability and speed and damage output that makes them good. It's kind of weird that they buff the Hunter Archers in like the most recent balance patch. So I feel like the Hunter Archers are like the second best Archers for sure. Alright, gonna get a couple of houses now. 
I'll just plot my fire archers in front of this house. They're going to walk forward a little bit, so hopefully the oozes won't chomp on them. Oh, yes. We pretty much just one shot the oozes with our special ability. It's very fantastic. I don't think we're going to need any more help than what we've got. This wave is going to be a little bit sketchy. There's a decent likelihood that the crossbowmen like shoot our buildings or something. It's going to probably rely heavily on our micro. To sort of draw the enemy fire. Keep it off of our important stuff. Well, there we go. I can just tank the rest of the shots. There's no penalty if your dude dies. He just respawns in a little bit. Okay. So this is going to be another wave where we're going to be doing a lot of tanking. It's going to be a little bit rough, so we may or may not end up hitting another restart here. But... If we can accomplish this wave, I think we'll be stabilized, I guess. This wave isn't isn't quite as bad as it looks, because it is just... It's three very small waves of dudes. So, I can sort of deal with one before the next one arrives. And since we don't have Challenge the Turtle God, that isn't, like, impossible. Don't you dare. Thank you. Alright. We're stabilized. So now we're fighting our first normal-ish wave. Uh, the Wasp God Challenge, I think, has finished. Hmm. I think I'm going to invest in a tower here. It's a little bit annoying, but... If I don't, then the big dude, the battering ram, is just going to run up and smack my harbor. And I don't think we have quite enough damage outputs where we can stop it from doing that. So it's just how it be. As it stands, I think the tower has a decent chance of getting destroyed too. Nope, we managed to fend against it. Now the rest of this is just like an easier wave than round one. With more reinforcements, so... It should just be a cleanup round. I think I'm gonna level up my keep now. And I'm gonna go for the Builder's Guild, which is a little bit greedy. But it will... Be like a continuous source of revenue. I'm gonna hope that my leveled up castle provides enough, and I'm just gonna build the gold mine. See if I can like eke out some extra coinage. If we don't lose a single house, we're gonna be doing very nicely coming up in the next wave. Each level up for the castle increases the attack rate of the castle and the damage, I think, too. So it's... Oh, we're gonna lose a house. That's not great. God, fire archers suck at shooting these flyers. Oh, man, that's four gold, or two gold down the pipe. Technically four gold. I should have just bought a tower. Rip. Oh, this guy's going to get smacked by the battering ram and shit, too. A little unlucky. Mm, just going to invest in some units at this point. I guess I'll also get my upgrades going, too. It's going to be a little bit of a spend wave for us, but... 
That is fine. I'm going to get hunter archers as well. And a dock. Dock will be like an investment future income. I think we're just going to have to resign ourselves to having our gold mine destroyed. There's not much we can do. If we get lucky, our forces will kill the enemy forces before they can come to our gold mine. But it's a little bit doubtful because all the enemies are fast. Okay, please destroy this thing. All this battering ram, fuck. You little piece of shit. Damn it. Well, we tried our best. Okay. Unfortunate. So now we're dealing with the 30 slimes and the 8 fast dudes. To be honest, I think this is totally just an income wave. So I will treat it as such. We maybe could invest in like a tower or something to help the slimes. I don't think we need to. And as always, the more we invest early, the less we'll have to worry late game. So I guess we're just going to want to have like three quarters of our dudes up the slime wave. We're personally going to help the slime wave. We're going to rely on our hunters to deal with the racers. I don't think the racers are going to attack our houses, even our like super broken ones. I'm pretty sure the only fast units that do that are the like speedlings. I don't remember what exactly they're called. The hunter killer ones that focus on you. So our houses should be safe enough. I'm going to pull these hunters even further back so that hopefully they don't get caught in the aggro against the spiky slimes. I'm personally going to help out the, sli ah, the spiky slimes just to make sure that shit doesn't go too bad. using my circle ability to damage the group of them and also manage aggro. Yep. And we're easily dealing with this wave. Fantastic. I think the next wave's the flyer wave. Yep, so we can look forward to some of our income being destroyed. The best thing we could do to protect our income is invest in more archers and some towers. I think it makes sense to invest in the defense of our income rather than risk it with buying extra income. So that's definitely where I'm going to be focusing my efforts. There we go. So I'm gonna grab three hunters to sort of help out on the right hand side. Do I not have... Oh my god, I leveled up the... I leveled up the knights! I didn't level up the archers! No! Okay, well, whatever. Whatever, we're just gonna have to make do with what we've got. That is super not great. We might pay dearly for this, but whatever. We do have, we still do have more archers than we had, like the first flyer wave. And we've got a tier two castle and a bunch of ta uh, towers. So it might not be totally the end of the world have to say. 
<laughs> That's annoying. I think the bottom dudes like flew around tactically to just snipe my one harbor. But that's fine. Look, like one harbor being destroyed is not that, not that bad. I'm getting a harbor in the bottom right while I still have the opportunity. I think I could level my castle. But I think it does make sense to just level up all my units instead. Ooh, we've got enough for another blacksmith upgrade, too. Guess I'm going to get another melee armor resistance. I'll invest the rest in economy. So this wave is going to be a little bit tough. They're going to destroy my towers for sure. I'm probably okay with that. We could post up in front of the towers, and then I guess we would just have two towers support. But the best way to handle the wave, in my opinion, is to just post up in this little nook over here. I'm going to have to flatten the dudes out. Yep, there we go. This will make full use of our archers. It'll super blockade the enemy units. And I'm just going to stack the and the winners on top of the other guys too. I don't think the ogres are AoE or anything like that. My hunters are going to just be camped out behind this rock too. If I were to leave them not on hold position, they would most assuredly just run in front and get killed. Which is why I'm just hold positioning everything. I could probably try some kiting strategies. But the crossbowmen are going to make it a little bit dubious. So I think probably just going to... We would be best served waiting for all the crossbowers to be aggroed and then... I don't know, doing some wacky shenanigans where we pull some ogres to some towers back here. You know, keep them out of the main fight. As you can see, all of our whole position units are just completely blockading the enemies. This is a tried and true strategy used many a StarCraft match to ruin the day of early Zerg rushers and stuff. It's just a very effective strategy. It's even like completely locking in the battering ram dudes, which is pretty funny. Always for that. And that's that wave dealt with. <laughs> they destroy our gold mine again. Look, that mine was... No, it was already broke. Awesome. So now we've got the wave with 20 flyers and a bunch of racers and oozes. Hmm. I guess I could do... Army wants Royal Mastery, but I didn't take the first Royal Mastery. I mean, 75% more damage is pretty good. Castle up would be pretty okay as well, though. Uh, what wave are we on? We're on night 11 out of 13. Okay, we'd be saving one or two gold per tower. I don't think that's really worth. I think the bonus attack damage is going to be more likely to help us out. I'm just going to plonk this wall down. It might be a mistake because it kind of means it's not going to be here as much for when the final wave is here, but whatever. 
I'm going to try to invest as much in the economy as I can right now. Actually, hmm, hold up. I don't know if this would even pay off. We're going to get two Don's worth of income, so it's literally going to be two gold for two gold. Yeah, no, we missed our window. Maybe we should have been more aggressive with our early upgrades. Oh, well. I'll just hold on to the cash. I mean, I'll, I'll buy another house just so that we have a higher score, I guess. But it is what it is. So we're going to want our hunters to be camped out over here, I think. Oh, this is actually a real rough one. The racers are going to be a real pain in the dick, too. Oh, okay. I mean, I guess we're going to want our fire archers to be over here on the right to defend our... whatchamacallit. Our duder. Our harbor. Our harbor is just gonna basically be luring all of the air units to itself. I think I'll even get some hunters so that we can kind of prolong the harbor's life a little bit. It's just gonna be the melee units versus the slimers, which they're probably gonna lose, but... The Slimers will then have to contend with our Fire Archers, and they're going to have to contend even further up with the Hunters, who are going to be untouched by the Flyers for the most part. So ultimately, I think the f Spiky Slimes are not much of a problem for us. Yep. You can see these flyers fucking shit up. Dude, why are the racers friggin... Those bastards, they're distracting my hunters. Ah, oh, fuck me, dude. That's so ass. Man. Well, whatever. Oh, no. The flyers... I fucked up all of our shit. God, why did these flyers move over there? Do they split up or something? Okay, well, whatever. That's pretty god awful. This is our second last wave. We've got a very marginal amount of cash. There's no point in trying to upgrade, we do not have the time. We're dealing with a bunch of units. I think, bang for buck, what we're gonna benefit the most from is gotta be units still. Hunter archers are really, really, really nice. I mean, more melee dudes is not super terrible either. Hmm. Maybe fire archers. I think fire archers are probably worth the most. We can spend the seven gold. Let's see, all our harpers are destroyed. Kinda sucky. I guess we could spend the seven gold on towers. Just reinforce our ranks. We're gonna be entering the last wave in a pretty god awful position at this rate. There's not much we can do here though. So our wave composition. There's a bunch of slimes in the bottom right. It's mostly normal slimes though. It's not like crazy slimes. So I do think like spin to winners plus swordsmen plus towers. That'll probably be enough. Maybe I'll plop down a couple Flame Archers too, just to bolster their ranks, and that should be enough. The humongous wave on the left is definitely going to be 
a real ball buster too. I think we can combine our defense against the bottom left and top left. Just by having, you know, our dudes sort of occupy this region. We're going to want at least four hunter archers. I'm going to say five hunter archers to chill behind our wall over here. This will have the wonderful benefit of making sure our walls are not destroyed by the racers. Because we are going to want these walls to be intact for the most part. And I guess I'll just pull these guys. I don't know. I think I think they'll probably be... We should probably focus more efforts on stopping the racers. This should be reasonable enough as far as waves go. Then I guess I'll just camp top left and help with this whole situation. All right, the enemy fast dudes are here. A little annoying, but whatever. Glad I have the plus 75% HP. So these guys are just pinging the crap out of me. Oh no, this is a total friggin' loss. Oh no, we should have prepared more carefully. I think we're just dead. Man! That's frustrating. I mean, the castle's holding. Kind of. No, it's not holding. Aw, oh, man. Okay. Well, this was kind of a dog shit run anyways. I think this is doable. We just need to invest better early and lose less stuff. I wonder if we could win this wave with the tower. Mm, no. Nah. Oh, we need a unit. Uh, we need these guys. You know, I'll try with the hunters. I'm probably just going to time lapse my attempt here. Because I may or may not succeed. I'm going to be, so, you know, <laughs> I'm stopping talking right here. Yeah, hunter archers. They are too weak to the crossbows. I'm going to try having the tier 2 castle instead of a couple houses here and a tower. Might result in an early restart, which will be annoying, but... I remember we dealt with the battering ram a lot easier than I anticipated last time. There we go. Yep. Now, granted, the... a couple houses might be more worth than an earlier builder's guild. I'm not sure. We've got the nine flyers. I think the nine flyers pinged a couple of my houses. If I remember correctly. So I'm just gonna get some hunter archers. We should be perfectly safe in this wave, and I'll get the gold and a house, and that should be good. Good enough. I think it'll be a good setup. I mean, again, as you can see, the hunter archers, they just 
one combo flyers. Yep, not even close. To be honest, I think it might be worth having the hunters literally live down here where these waves are coming from. This might be a mistake. But it'll prevent the thing where they just fucking slip past all our shit. So I'm willing to give it a try. Worst case scenario, all our harbors are destroyed, which is the exact same situation as last time. I'm gonna yoink one more fire archer. Bring him up to this side. I guess I'll personally watch and see what happens down here. Yeah, because four hunter shots kills one of these guys. Yeah, I think they are pretty much clearing them. Let's see, our harbor was destroyed. Who would have thought? And a bunch of houses are getting destroyed. Who would have thought? Fire archers just suck massive dick when it comes to targeting the air units. But uh, I guess we didn't lose two of our things here. It's very sucky. Wait, hold up. <laughs> what are these guys doing? Can they not just like suicide themselves, please? Thank you. I guess I'll friggin' tank this ogre aggro. That's not super ideal. Well, I'm fucking dead. Good luck. Dude, the ogres do so much damage. God, what are ogres doing down in the bottom side, too? That's the real question. Oh. Okay. Let's gotta safely manage the ogre micro. Ah, we lost. The majority of our income, but no big deal. So this fucking wave. God damn, it's gonna suck. How the hell are we gonna deal with this? Like, maybe a support tower or two? We just focus on making sure units don't die. See, it will take 20 gold to level up one tower and 23 to level up the other. So we will have enough. Yeah, I guess. Like, the oil towers definitely would be good, but... I think just having surviving units is going to be how we survive. No pun intended. So how are we going to split up our dudes? I mean, it's going to be as evenly as possible on the left and right flank. Oh, this is probably going to be a loss. Probably going to have to friggin' go through again and econ harder early, but whatever. We'll just have to see how this plays out. Hmm. I'm definitely feeling the less tankiness on this guy. I'm also feeling like my dudes are literally fucking dying and need to be healed before they die. Right, 
Alright, they should be fighting in the proper place now. Okay. That was extraordinarily painful. We're losing units left and right. But whatever. They're gonna slowly be healed up in between waves at least. This healing tower is in much better position to help out our dudes. So that is nice. I'm gonna personally try to make the wave last less long. Yeah, it's so weird. I am just straight up doing 75% more damage to this guy. Compared to the other time. Oh man, we lost all our units on the left hand flank. That's a no bueno. Alright, time to go pick up the pieces in the right hand flank. Looks like we've lost all our units in the right hand flank. Extraordinarily not great. All is not well on the eastern front. Okay, I can't waste any more time here. I need to just focus my efforts on ending these waves as fast as possible. Dealing chip damage whenever I can to the slimes. Stuff's looking pretty spicy, not gonna lie. Keep is just taking a bunch of damage. And so many units. Oh no. Yeah, we are screwed. Man. I felt like we were doing pretty good that time. Alright, I'll give it one more attempt. This is gonna be 100% time lapse though. Maybe two more attempts. I'll see if I can eek this early wave once more. Oh my god, you actually can survive this wave? Oh, okay. Well, I mean, this wave definitely needs archers, or else we'll lose a bunch of houses.
time will tell if the gold fast expands can put us in a better position. I think we're actually much better economically speaking, just because we could get away with that early wave. Because early gold cascades in the late gold very rapidly. Now look at that. I think pushing the... Yeah, we literally have extra five gold to work with. I think pushing the harbor a little bit later too is not the worst either. Well, this is going to be a little bit risky, but I think I remember protecting the harbor every single time before. Okay. I mispositioned the archers. They should have been pinging this friggin' battering ram since the start. Okay. We didn't lose the harbor this time. Thank goodness. Was very close. Alright. We absolutely do need the hunter. To be honest, I think we give up on our designs of the gold mine and maybe just get like a harbor instead. We can use the rest of the gold for houses. That gold mine and siren song, it's just not worth it. I think it would be best to consider the gold like a short-term investment rather than a long-term thing. I mean, obviously, but like, you know. Because we're almost guaranteed to lose the gold mine next wave, is better just to... Why the hell did I start the wave so early? Okay, doesn't matter. Not gonna lose house. Next wave, we're gonna have to buy units, I think, for sure. We are gonna have a little extra gold to work with to do it, so that will be fine. I don't think anything's wrong with the spin winners and swordsman strategy. Definitely do need the physical melee resistance, because that applies to buildings, too. Then I think if everyone is up here, this wave is just going to be fine. We aren't going to lose any buildings. So I'll take the opportunity to continue to invest in the economy. There we go. Oh yeah, this is most certainly better. Divide and conquer. We take the one wave, then we kill the other wave. Simple enough. I don't even know why I was building a gold mine. Well, I do know why. I had five gold, and I was like, five gold? That's the amount a gold mine costs. 90% certain this wave also does not require any more input from my part. So I will just continue to invest in the economy. Let's see. 
Seven gold for two cash, definitely not worthwhile. I think I can just buy and upgrade houses. You know, now's a decent enough time to invest in the gold mine. We could build like a pity tower, but early gold, cascades until late gold. The key to this has got to be to invest as much early gold as possible. If we waste even a coin, that will cascade into future losses. These dudes can go up here once more. Bungled my special ability there. Might spell the death of my fucking troops. Which definitely sucks. Okay, well good luck troops. I think it's fine. The fire archers just aren't counting these guys too well. Too effectively. Now we're at... The hell wave. I think here's what we've got to do. We got to get the tier three castle. Um, I think royal mastery is just fine enough. And then we need a leveled up hunter archery range. Then I guess the last two gold can go into a house that I think's not gonna get it blown up. With this amount of Hunter Archers, we might be able to succeed. Because it takes four to shut down one of these waves. So four of these dudes here. Boom. Easy peasy. Four of these dudes in the bottom right. Also necessary. They'll deal with those guys. I guess I'll have the four in the right hand side. And then I'll have my eight, four to eight fire archers dealing with the left lane. I think there's probably a 100% chance we lose the harbor on the right hand side. The left lane is a little bit sketchy, but our castle should be shooting at these guys on the left. So. Yeah, they're just going to ping my shit a little bit, but that's fine. I think the Hunter Archers are doing a decent job of covering that lane. Oh, these little cocksuckers. They got one of my houses. Still. One house, much less bad than losing a dock. This lane is obviously... Oh, we're just going to barely get this one in time. This lane is going to rely on the same tactics we used every single time. It's no big deal. We're in a much better position. This time anyways. Take advantage of all this. Don't think there's any economy building we could possibly invest in. Other than a house. I guess we could invest in a house or two. Yeah, why not? Four spin the winners in each lane. Four knights in each lane. I'll position the knights first because it's more important that they are tight, I think. Oh, okay. It's 
another wave down. Didn't lose any economy. Now this is that sort of spooky wave with the 20 flyers. But somehow I feel relatively confident that we're going to be pretty much okay. We, how are we going to spend our money? I think we're pretty much econ dub. There's no point in spending any more money on economy. I guess I'll build more troops. And more archers are definitely a high priority troop. And I suppose a couple towers never hurt. Never hurt anyone except, of course, the enemies. I think it's pretty hard to imagine 16 spin winners and 16 knights not being able to handle 20 units of any kind, unless, you know, other than ogres, obviously. Facts, the Spencer winners are so are going to be so potent that I think a lot of the racers' bite is going to be taken out too. Guess I'll put I don't know some fire archers here. Going to put some hunter archers in that little nook up close to the action as well. That should be like in the direct path of the flyers. Hopefully they shoot the flyers and not like random slimes. I guess the next spot I want to put hunters is like this corner over here because it should serve the dual purpose of pinging the racers who are coming by and hitting the flying units if they like redirect to our other harbors assuming they like manage to ping our harbor here on the right hand side which is not super unlikely all right there we go Like this ultra reasonable wave. Alright, because of the gap, our dudes are focusing the flyers. The flyers only need to get a couple shots in on our dude on our harbor to destroy it. But they did not tap it. Oh my god, what a clean wave this one is. Oh, yes. So now this is the kind of nightmarish wave. I think we've just been simplifying it by having our forces camp in this zone. And that was reasonable enough. We have even more forces to work with this time. Let's see, there's... Not enough time for another upgrade. That is okay. I think we might even be able to afford a tier 3 tower if we wanted. Though I do not know if we necessarily want it right now. I think we do want a leveled up harbor. That... <laughs> okay, we might have that might have been a bad investment actually, but it is whatever. Mm. I guess a wall right here is fine. We are gonna want to level some of these up to level two towers, because they're gonna be level three towers next wave anyways. There we go. So for our unit splits, I think we were doing like four spin winners and four knights and a couple flame archers on the right hand side, right? And we were figuring that in combination with our towers should be enough. I'll even plop three flame archers here. 
Then on the left hand side, we're going to get all of our spin to winners. And all of our knights. And I believe I was having the knights sort of do the hold position strats that we did just a few waves ago. These guys are definitely going to soak up the aggro. I think we're just having the spin winners just existing. I wanted my hunters to kind of be locked in position here because last time they ran past the front wave. I guess I'll have four hunters be on the right hand side too just because there's going to be a bunch of racers and the racers are going to definitely ping our wall if we are not careful. The remaining flame archers I guess I'll just place them all along this wall except for the last three who I'll just have up here. Hopefully they tank for the tower a little bit. Because the crossbowmen walking past are just going to take pot shots. Who knows? Yep, this seems to be a very easy wave. In fact, I don't even know if the spin twinners <laughs> like are necessary here. Maybe I'll like yoink some of them. Just so they can better defend down here. Then I'll be the person who guards the top left. Bottom left's looking a little bit sketchy. Never mind, it's holding strong. And with the ogres dealt with, I think that's that wave completely handled perfectly fine. And because that wave is handled perfectly fine, we actually have the proper amount of income coming into this next wave. So first things first, do you think burning oil on this side should be fine? A little dubious about making this guy burning oil because it's already so injured. I think we could build a maybe a couple ironclads as the inner towers. So ironclads hit two targets at once. Though I don't think the healing towers were necessarily 100% of a bad strategy. It could be worth building ballistas too, because the ballistas will target the boss, but you know, so would an ironclad tower. I think I'll go for ironclads this time. Let's see. We probably could do with one ballista tower. We put this guy, I think this guy should be a ballista tower. It's going to have the opportunity to smack this boss over and over and over and over. It'll be glorious. Looks like this left hand wall only costs 8 coins to level up. So I will do that. Now as for our unit placement, I think... Hmm. I mean it's going to have to be 6 knights on the left. Right here should be a good resting position. And then six knights on the right. We definitely are going to want to rest in this nook as far back as possible. The spin to winners will occupy the same territory. The spin to winners again will occupy the same territory. As for the hunters, I think it's reasonable to have them hold position in the nooks. Six per side, as per usual. The hunters have a high tendency of getting themselves killed, so nooking them up 
will be good. And I can just rest the fire archers behind this wall. And they should also be good. Alrighty. I think this guy... can't remember which side he starts on. I guess I'll just sit in the middle. I think he starts on the right. Yep. I'm going to definitely focus this boss as well. It needs to lower its HP bar as much as possible. Whenever I get my ability off cooldown though, I think there's no reason not to ease the burden on our troops a bit. Alright, there we go. I think our dudes will handle this just fine. Now the dudes in the bottom left, perfectly in ballista range. Which is wonderful. You can see it just pinging the wave to a great degree. That was a really nice sweep as well. There we go. I think we avoided a whole ass wave from spawning. Alright, our guys have it on the left. We need to get moving over to the right. This wave's halfway down. Can the ballista hit this guy from all the way over there? Looks like it cannot. We are running extraordinarily low on dudes now. Not much to say, except shit sucks. The right hand flank is definitely just going to be a kind of ball buster for us because we don't have any oil there. Though in fairness, it would have sucked to have like a half broken burning oil that just like instantly perished. Okay, we handle another wave. With these, I think this wave is gonna go closer now. Indeed it did, but on the right hand side. I need to focus my efforts here. As much as possible. I'm getting taking a little bit too much heat. The ballista does reach when it's close on the right hand side at least. Okay. There's a lot of racers on our stuff. Oh well. Looks like they're being cleared out perfectly fine. This wave shouldn't be too bad for us. We have the burning oil. Burning oil is chucking down the boss. Our castle is also chunking the boss. Now this is going to be a little bit of a scary wave. Though again, it's take the boss is taking the combined wrath of 10 million archers. Lost some houses. Don't think we lost any units. We're getting our castle chunked some. That is perfectly acceptable. This wave's looking a little bit spooky, but we have our castle doing the good work. Looks like our spin the winners have positioned themselves to clear out the racers. Two more waves. It's going to be one more burning oil wave. That shouldn't be too bad. So the burning oil does a ton of damage, so it's just going to ping down the boss. My castle is focusing the boss. Yep, easy peasy. Simple as. I'm going to ring some archers over. It is one more wave. Now this is... A slightly scary wave, because the dudes are just coming to beat my castle's ass, and there's not much I can do to stop it. Alright. 
focusing my efforts on the racers. Please fucking kill the racers. Please kill them. Please kill them. Oh, Jesus. We've done it. That is what I'm talking about. Oof. Well, there we go. Rossi. With six out of seven mutators. It just goes to show how much of a difference early economy makes. Those two towers, those two houses that we grabbed up right at the beginning, their gold let us buy more houses, and those houses' gold let us buy more houses. And as you can see, the result was extraordinarily potent. It's definitely close, and we did have to rely on my micro for a few waves, which would have otherwise just been totally lost. But that is a facet of the game. I feel accomplished. I feel very happy that we actually won. <laughs> when we were reaching that hour and a half mark, and I lost the second time around, and it looked like it was impossible... That was definitely not a good vibe. I'm happy I went through with another attempt. I think it's safe to say we're never going to be able to beat Frosty uh, with all the mutators on. Considering just how close the margins were to begin with. There's no universe where we could fight 14 swordsmen and not lose the castle if they had 75% more HP, for example. So that's about it for content in the game. The developers did release a sneak peek at their next level, which is going to be some sort of water level, which is cool. I'm highly excited to see how that's going to turn out. Hmm. Wait, can we do new one with all the mutators? No, we cannot. Okay. Then yeah, that'll probably be it for me until that new patch comes out. So, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope to see you next time for more Thronefall. Goodbye!